Alright, so my homemade turbo system has turbo oiling problems. And, uh, yeah, I probably shouldn't have taken the turbo apart, but I'm going to show you all about it so that you can see what a VS Racing 7875 turbo looks like. And, uh, let's get started. Welcome to Budget Outlaws, by the way. Well, I thought the turbo seals were out, so I dug right in and started ripping it apart so I could dig into that turbo to see what was going on. And hopefully all of this will tell you that maybe you don't have to do that. And all these rings do is just overlap this right here and keep it connected. There's nothing that it screws into except the body. So that is that portion of it. And as you can see, I still have a whole lot of oil in it. Overlaps. Here's a, where it touches on the uh, exhaust housing. So when we pull that off, you can see where they connect. Nothing, nothing too elaborate. It just works. And then we have the main shaft. Okay, here's where we have to pay attention. So we've got their mark here. Well, I've made another mark right there. And on the end of the uh, housing, I made it, I missed the, the other mark. So I made my mark on the end of the housing. Yeah. It takes a bit of effort to get it unbolted. Not bad. It's probably 25, 30 foot pounds or something like that, maybe 40. Um, and it bolts tidy <laughs> lefty tidy righty loosey so it's backwards so in other words turning left tightens it turning right um loosens it i don't know if you guys can see that or not i think you can all right so once that's off you can pull this compressor blade off and see the little balance marks there So it's important that it gets back on the same part, same spot on this shaft. Okay, so now that that's out, this whole shaft will come out. And then we have this little deflector. There's another balance spot. So you can see there's quite a bit of balance work done. And here's where the actual oil seals are. So let me get up close here. So that little ring, just ignore this other thing, but that little ring is the oil seal. And as you can see, it it's not going to seal against the pressure situation. So what it does is, and it's like that, um, what it does is as the oil comes in the top, and it drains out the bottom, so the top hole is going to be smaller than the bottom hole, so that it just flows right through and you know gets some on the bearings and the mean and pass through. Well, if there's a restriction on the bottom, or if it's coming in the top too hard fast, and it can't keep up on going going out the bottom, then this whole thing fills up. As it fills up, it gets past the halfway mark. Let me see if I can do this. So, so like here would be the halfway mark. I'm going to get to that line. So there's the bottom of the uh, bearing, or the bushing, which is about where this is going to run. And uh, when it gets past that, uh, when it gets past this point, it can't keep up with it. I should say when it gets past this point, at the top of it, because what you're going to do when you put this together, you're going to put this opening at the very top, and so that when it spins, it catches... Um, the whole bottom is sealed real good, and the bottom and just the top is not. And who knows if that's actually a true thing or if it's just something somebody has said on the internet. So, anyways, um, so we've got this seal on this side. We've got another seal on this side. I'll show you that in another video here. Push it out the back. There's the ring. I probably would have put it on upside down. There's no. There's no. Uh, o-ring except for this piece right here and unless it's leaking out the housing then that's not your problem so it's got to be these piston rings so 
So here the ring is on the top, and it's on the, the top uh, connection there. So we're just going to push it in there, and a little bit of effort, and it's going to pop in. A little bit of effort, a little bit of effort, there it goes. So now it's in, and it's I'm going to kind of coordinate this spot right here with that. So I'm going to try and kind of hang on to it as I manage this piece. All right, so there's my mark right there on top, pointing that way. Um, we're not concerned about that part being up. We're concerned about that part matching this part right here. We are concerned that the piston ring seal is pointing up so that it has that same advantage of getting halfway up the shaft before it uh, becomes a issue. All right, so there we see another balanced spot. And we see this, the, the mark here and the mark here. So we are now ready to put the bolt back on. And again, this is lefty tidy, turning it to the left. Okay. So now we have that in position, we can go ahead and make our uh, every one of these is going to have a different torque. So That's about right where it was. So when you tighten the housing on that, rattle will go away. So that should do it. And uh, I can see a little dab of dirt there that I don't want in there. And the hair there. I'm sure worse things have gone through turbos. Watch, watch Cletus's videos. One there. There's only four bolts on here, and you'll have to look up the torque for your turbo, or do like I did and just guess, which probably isn't the best idea. Let's try it again. That's better. All right, so let's turn this over so we can see what we're doing. sense. All right, so going back to my problem. So I was getting too much oil in there. And I'm pretty good oil pressure. Probably 40, 45 at idle. And 65 or so at RPM. I have a uh, 6 AN hose coming to the top. And so if we look at the two sizes, so here's the restrictor, and here's the line that I was using. And you can see that this is just massively bigger. So this is going to be considerably more restrictive. And I'm thinking that adding this might just do the job. So we'll add that there and then this in here and I might even try and figure out a way to get an oil pressure gauge in there in, in line so I can get a reading. That would be the smartest way to do it. They're telling us 40 psi is about right. Which, that's what I'm getting at idle. So it's definitely too much when I get on boost. The things I need to find out is did the one millimeter that the Aussie guys are talking about, Skid Factory or something like that, 
was that for ball bearing turbos, which they probably use mostly ball bearing turbos and high intensity skids. Only a scratch. It's aluminum, but it's pretty stout. And it takes a beating. Oh, in fact, right there is where it took the beating, right there in that corner. This. I want that to point out that one. Okay, now I'm holding it with my fingers till I can get a bolt started. Pulling the clamp clamp together with my fingers, and if I let go of my fingers, and then I'm in trouble. I'll get it just looking straight up at it, it spins around, it should be about right. And the other thing is. So now we have this fairly straight. We need to tighten the turbo, tighten all these V-band clamps again, and probably do some modifications to the shield. So as a reminder, we added this uh, two millimeter restrictor, which is probably a little big. It really needs to be like 0.65, which is like a millimeter and a half. And uh, we'll see what it does. So, but that's what I had, and so that's what we're going to try. And so the next step is to test the oil pressure. So I added a gauge to make sure that there was enough oil pressure getting to it, which they, we'll see that there is. Seven ounces, 250 milliliters, maybe 200 milliliters. So it's it's a decent amount. So first test after oil restrictor is put in. Found a couple other little things to try and help out with uh, some of this wiring and such.
we all learn something from all of this. Number one is find out what kind of oil restrictor you need before you start looking at other items, such as taking the oil or the uh, turbocharger apart for absolutely no reason at all. It is in perfect condition. VS Racing, you do put together a good product. Thank you. And also make sure that you have a good drain. I have a, a turbo that's lower than the oil pan, so I had to use a scavenge oil scavenge pump. And I got that from CX Racing. Um, good price, and uh, it seems to work really well. And finally, we're going to have bugs like this. We have to work them out, especially when you're starting from scratch like I am. And this is my first turbo system, so I'm going to make mistakes. So I'll go ahead and make the mistakes and tell you guys all about them, and hopefully it'll save you guys from going through it. Anyways, this sure is going to be a lot of fun when I get it done. If I ever get it done, I, I will. It's going to be a good. It's going to be a good time. Stay with me.